Hello, so today we've got some new Hex Orb Sorceress stuff that's been revealed. So basically, uh, in set 1 to 4, we've had support cards around Hex Orb Sorceress, but then going into D set 6, there's speculation because the cards didn't specify Pentagleam and Hex Orb Sorceress. People started thinking that maybe there'll be like a new Hex Orb boss card in that set, but it didn't actually happen. So I think what they did was at the time they probably just tried to make better sense of it because there was not really that much point specifying the sorceress names when you could just say sorceress. So uh, that's what happened then. Uh, but people have kind of been talking about a new boss for a while uh, to go along with um, at least the old one. And we finally got it. And they done it in a good way as well because they made it so the name is treated as Hex Orb Sorceress, which kind of makes up for some of the weird card design at the beginning of these series where they kind of like specified the full names of cards, which I don't think was the best way to go about it. But uh, thankfully that support is still usable with the new cards. So there's a lot of ways you can still uh, deck build uh, with the new Hex Orb if you want to do that. So basically when you Persona Ride, you can put either of the Hex Orbs on top of the other and you'll still get the draw one and front row power plus 10 until under turn. Now that you've got eight Hex Orb Sorceresses with the same name, just like Thegory and all that stuff, you've now got a consistent Persona Ride deck. So I think this deck is going to be really good. Uh, because of that consistency, but obviously we've had the grade one for a while now, which could do CB1, uh, basically search and shuffle your deck. That's never really always been an easy one because that card, Totrus, uh, does force the shuffle. So when you use Pentagleam and you see triggers and things, you don't really like using it then. So it's going to be easy now to justify cutting it uh, as opposed to before. And now that you can just main deck this and just draw into them instead. And obviously, if you have them in hand, you never have to shuffle a deck in the first place. So that's pretty good. Also, Totrus can't search for this one because this card is only treated as Hex Orb when it's on the field, not in the deck. So just bear that in mind as well. Now, to go through the other abilities, we have uh, for the second effect, uh, this unit, well, basically, if you Persona Ride, uh, it gains Drive plus one. So it's basically free, unlike the original, which used to be CB1 Soul Blast one, which obviously hurt your resource management. Because one of the problems we had with Hex Orb is that it was basically like an overcosted, easier to misplay version that, that had less payoff compared to Bastion. So obviously that's why you played Bastion back then, because Bastion was basically just an easier to use, higher payoff, less misplay version of Hex Orb. And that's obviously a big problem that the deck had for quite a chunk of D-Series. But now they've kind of sweetened the deal, so you've got Drive plus one for free. So no more of that awkward management in that department. But also your trigger effects, rather than you giving 10k every time you get trigger onto a unit, now the triggers themselves just getting the power. So it's a bit like Pentagonal Magus from V-Series. So that also means that all that power is bundled together. You can't just go trigger to one unit and then 10k to another unit. You have to put it all into one. But the good thing is about this is that for Foresight Glow Sorceress, the promo card, the grade two, that lets you draw and counter charge. It works with this. They actually considered that card as they were making it. So the wording of Glow Side Sorceress actually makes it so that even the power that it gains from the trigger, as well as being targeted for the next skill we're going to go through, makes it so that you can still get both effects. So the next skills, when this unit's uh, attacking uh, battle reveals a trigger in the drive check, you can still blast one and then you can stand with your rears. So you're choosing and standing. So you choose a Glow Side Sorceress and you get both the trigger and you get this as well. So it's pretty good uh, for this as well. And obviously you build more free advantage in the deck. So Hex Orb is in a really good spot, I think, with this new grade three. And then next we've got this card here that can also help with soul management. So he's a wizard, um, a Fulgent wizard, I don't know how you pronounce it. Basically it's a grade two. We've got a lot of good grade twos in Sorceress actually. When he attacks and you have a Vanguard Sorceress in his name, Look at the top of your deck, and if it's in stand, your Vanguard is, you can then put that card into your deck into your soul. So obviously, it soul charges, you can build soul for Hex Orb with it. But the thing that's very worth noting is that it doesn't care what the name of the Sorceress is. So that means you can use it on any grade. Obviously, it's a grade 2, so you're almost always going to be using this on turn 2 onwards. But the fact that you can do that means that basically, this card can gain more priority in your deck building over cards like obviously Kakron, which a lot of people have dropped now, but also the um, that new grade two that checks top two, one to soul, one to top. I kind of forgot its name, uh, but the one that came out in D set six, it was like a 
I think, common. So that's kind of uh, less a priority now because this card kind of fulfills almost the same function. And because it can be substituted, you've kind of got that. But the problem with those other two cards that I mentioned is that they're kind of awful to call into the field because you've got like, now you've got cards like Octoray Sorcerers, you've got cards like Four Glow Side Sorcerers. So there's a lot of competition for the front row. And obviously like those early game cards that we had before, those two that I mentioned, they kind of just feel like dead cards that you place on the field, but they don't always kind of attack because you might already have other grade twos in hand that you want to call instead. So with this card, at least he's useful in the later game as well, in that when your drag check reveals a trigger, he gains 5k power, so there's something you can do there as well. And he still supports your uh, Hex Orb Sorceress as well. But of course, uh, when you stand him back up, you get to use that power again onto that second title. Not even again, sorry, because it would be the first time you're using it. But there's just some some use you've got at least. So it's a bit of a... Like, he's more of a well-rounded card. Like, he's not crazy. He's not the best on any specific turn. But... He's always going to have that function of being usable no matter what turn the game is, which is, I think, the strength of this card, to be honest. It's just that the fact that it's a rounded all-game card in moderation. And then on to the next thing. So we've got uh, over here this uh, Angel card, which has an effect that clearly looks like it's designed for Hex Orb Sorceress. So I think I've been seeing quite a few of these cards being revealed where they're basically like discarded during the ride phase and you Soul Blast 1, Return Bomb deck, draw a card. So it's a ride line card, um, discard card, gives you advantage. You're drawing one without actually decking out because you're increasing your deck size at the same time as depleting it. So decking out becomes less of an issue while you're getting that free advantage. Well, Soul Blast one, if you want to call that free or not. But the, the, the hand advantage that you're gaining is really, uh, really good. And then obviously when, he's, when she's placed on a rear guard circle and you've already Persona ridden this turn, you can then CB1 and look at two from the top of your deck. And then you choose and add one to your hand and then return the rest of the top of the bottom of your deck. So it's a bit like Octoray Sorceress, except it's turn four. So that is a downside, the fact that it's a turn four ability. However, there is also upsides to this. So the first skill is usable on the first three turns of the game. Because in your ride phase, you discard this, you plus, discard it again, you plus, you discard it again, you plus. And then on turn four, when you're not doing ride line stuff anymore, then you just drop it for the plus one. So it's still a pretty decent card because it's always going to have, as long as you draw it um, for, for turn, then it's always going to be usable. And that's assuming that your persona riding always goes off, obviously, because uh, in Hex Orb, I think you can go all the way through with the, with the Hex Orb uh, re-riding. I mean, you've got eight Hex Orb targets now. You've even got a grade one if you wanted to go very extreme and just play that. You can play the Persona um, Order, the regardless piece that is. So you've got, what, 13 cards that can basically help your Persona writing. So uh, that's that's um, pretty much a, a, an interesting to have. So, yeah, very interesting cards. Um, I think the way they designed Hexorb has been pretty good because they've made it so you can use it with all the old stuff. And um, obviously... Obviously, um, it's looking good um, right now. Can't wait to play it. Resource management is much better now. And synergy with old cards. If you use Lala Rita, you can even go five attacks with the new Hex Orb. But the fact that Hex Orb, if you want to use it as a ride line card, you can still get four attacks on turn three because that bit doesn't require Persona Riding. Or you can just go for riding the new one over the old one if you prefer to go that way and use the old one skill for the power plus 10k. Because obviously, the new one, you can't give 10k unless you're on Persona Rider, so that's a turn 4 onwards play. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be very exciting. I think Hex Orb is going to be one of the more interesting decks to actually deck build for. So uh, that's basically um, just some of my thoughts uh, on it. Um, I think Grade 1s will be also interesting to think about because like, whether we still play Totrus or not is one thing, but also Lalarita... Uh, Die Glass Sorceress. I know Die Glass Sorceress has been losing popularity, but I think maybe people might start rethinking that one again. That's that's possible. Uh, there's also, and I say that because there's just the idea of wanting to play boosters, obviously, as well. And obviously, Totrus has the disadvantage of shuffling the deck, which can sometimes get a bit awkward. Um, 
But then again, shoving deck can be good because, you know, if you use Octoray Sorceress and you see an over trigger um, in your hand, you put it back into your deck, you've got a chance of drive checking it because you've shuffled it now rather than just leave it at the bottom. So, I mean, shuffling can be good. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot to think about. I've, I found that really interesting that they've they kind of made it a lot more thought-provoking with the new support So can't wait to see what this will be like anyway. I will catch you guys later